Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on an update to Dredgeless Dredge. Dredgeless Dredge is, at its core, a self-mill list that wants to use various means and that we have at our disposal to mill our own library instead of our opponents. And we want to mill our library to have various good effects happen when certain cards are milled or certain cards are in our graveyard. Say, Creeping Chill, Drains for three... Narc Amoeba will just come into play when milled. Bloodgast, Silver Smoke Ghoul, and Prized Amalgam are all sticky recursive threats that can come from the graveyard into the battlefield several times over the game and be really sticky, hard to remove threats. And can and lead to, in certain instances, having an absolutely insane board state very, very early on. Granted, that requires, you know some really good situations to happen, but it can happen with a large degree of frequency. And the one card I'm really going to take time to talk about is Psychic Frog, a new card from Modern Horizons 3. This card is fantastic for this list, because not only is it, say, a draw engine, if it happens to connect, which is nice, and we can always, we usually, as a self-mill list, can activate the Exile 3 things to get Flying Claws pretty easily. But the big thing is the discard a card, 1-1 one -one counter, aspect of the frog since sometimes we have some of our recursive creatures in our hand and they we don't really want to cast them the traditional way if we don't have to and a psychic frog allows us to at instant speed not only grow the frog but say put any one of our recursive threats from our hand into our graveyard and just make the frog really really big and scary and a must answer threat for your opponent allowing the rest of our uh free board, for lack of a better term, to largely start, you know, bonking our opponent's head and applying pressure that way. And the land base, also pretty self-explanatory and simple. You want a really aggressive land base that comes untapped, ideally on turn one, since really the deck ha is at its best when it's able to hit the ground running on, running on turn one with either one of its basically mill three card cards. And beyond those land base, or the, that part of the land base, the other part are the new Modern Horizons 3 land bases, which basically give us some form of interaction in the Bolt lands that we might be able to use sometimes, which is a feature that previous versions did not have. And f air quote free removal in the land base is nice whenever we can get it. Also have three copies of Cephalid Colosseum, not only as a, in theory, but just a better island, we can also, if we have Threshold, use the Cephalid Coliseum to get, again, some of our sticky recursive threats out of our hand into the yard to, you know, come back and do the same thing that we want our deck to do for much the same reasons we have the Psychic Frog in the list. And that's the basics of the list. Sideboard, pretty self-explanatory uh, silver bullet cards. Negate, if you happen to just need to deal with some sort of scary non-creatures... Bogart Trawler, which is really just uh, graveyard hate. Some Ritual of Soots, since sometimes you it does suck to blow up your own board, but since most of our creatures are the pretty recursive threats, we don't mind Ritual of Sooting like an opposing go-wide board, since we can usually get our board back relatively simple. And also, sometimes if you don't sweep an opponent's board, you'll just die. Feed the Swarm can be creature removal if you need it to, but this is really for the occasional uh, enchantment floating around, like that one mana white energy uh, uh, like prison orb style card whose name I can't remember. It's usually here for enchantment hate, but again, can be creature hate if you need it to be. Tainted Remedy for the loads of life gain heavy decks floating around the format. Unmoored Ego for any actual combo decks are particular cards you just want to like get rid of and not have to worry about uh and we also have ghost quarters if we need to hate on any particular lands ghost quarters is a great way to do that like your gates decks or, or whatever and that is the basics of the list don't forget to like the video if you like it subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future and if you have any sort of questions like i don't have x what about y I'll try to recommend, you know, replacements where I can, but honestly, this list is pretty tight. There is very, very few Wiggle Room cards that you can afford to not have, 
it's yeah, it's not really honestly, it's not that budget friendly of a list. Granted, the sideboard cards can vary depending on your own experience, but the main deck card with maybe ripples of undeath being the only sort of card that can be have wiggle room, and maybe you might have different uh, versions of lands that come into play untapped in the first two turns. Th this might change for you, and maybe the ripples of undeath. But beyond that. The list is pretty set in stone. You can't really get much faster. But anywho, thank you all so much for watching. And now we'll go on to game number one. And game number one with our little dredgeless dredge list. And of course we play first because we have a brain. And this is a perfectly fine opener. Yeah, it sucks to have some of our uh, recursive threats in our hand. But if we have to just play them the old-fashioned way, we can. Hi, Cap. Go ahead and play a Otherworldly Gaze on one. Uh, in that case, I'm going to keep the Psychic Frog on top. Since this will do a good job of showing that the one of the reasons uh, we talked about why the frog is in here is the ability to at instant speed get rid of some of the uh, recursive threats in our hand here that we don't necessarily want there. Yes, I didn't even notice the 160 card bit, but sure, that's fine, I guess. In that case, end of the turn. Get rid of some stuff from our hand. Make our boy big and scary. And then we'll see what we draw. Uh, cat, could you not, please? No, no, no. Don't be a butt. Thank you. That's Hey, that's you still being a butt. Uh, in the meantime, guess we'll do an otherworldly gaze. We'll do the flashback one to hide more information. Uh, ghoul can go. Land can go. Keep a glimpse here. I guess we'll play the land as a land. Uh, do I have three... Pardon? Three things I... Honestly, I can't. Uh, if our opponent takes the block... Yeah. Since, we'll take the, or since they're taking the block, we'll get rid of the gaze. We can always flash it back. And this actually gets rid of the Bishop of Wings. Anything to just put a dent in their plan to gain life. Loyal Warhound. I mean, okay. I wish this card was better than it is, but it's one of those... It's like the way that White manages to ramp, so sure, I guess. They're also running a deck that's, you know, 160 card, kind of battle wits goofy-ish anyway, so... What are you gonna do? Anywho... Glimpse the unthinkable ourselves. We sure as hell don't want to mill them this game because it's not really going to mean that much. There we go. Do I have three things in here now I can get rid of? I do. In that case, get rid of some of the lands we're not going to be able to use to give the frog flying. Just go over the little dog. See what we draw. Uh, in that case, we don't need the Amalgam, and we're going to trigger it when I believe the other Amalgam comes into play. Of course, this should come into play on their end step, I believe. It's the next end step, right? Yeah. Okay, that absolutely sucks. Yeah, okay. That does stink so much, but, I mean, we got there eventually. Oh, I'll take that trade. A hundred percent, yeah. Of course, we have six, six uh, worth of stats now we can just sort of sit on. But this does actually show my point about the Psychic Frog being one hell of a, like, uh, must-remove kind of threat. Since, I mean, they did remove the frog, and that does suck, but we still do have a really big scary board. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all those cards. 
There we go. And now we're just, you know, still bonking for six. If they have some sort of sweeper, we're going to cry, and that would stink. But, you know, short of that, we're kind of okay. And now we can just play a Bloodgast. Uh... Let me... Okay. A part of me wanted to just full send, but in the off chance they have a Settle the Wreckage, I'm going to attack with just enough to be lethal. Yep, yeah, there we go. Thank God I made the right play there. I'll take it. There's only one basic in here, but, you know, a land is a land. Do get back some Blood Gast here. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, are they going to play anything, or are they just going to do it again? I mean, they could have four copies of it. Okay, in that case, I'm going to again attack with just enough to be lethal. One, two... Or, hang on, wait a second, two, four, six. Oh, the whole board is, yeah, sorry, two, four, six. It has to be the entire of my board to be just enough for lethal. Again, he has another one. Yeah, that, okay. No point, I don't have anything. Go ahead and play a Psychic Frog. Play a Gaze, and just see what we can find. And yeah, we'll keep a glimpse on top, why not? Again, they now we're just, you know, <laughs> hoping they don't have whatever sweeper they're going to have eventually. That's fine. I guess we'll glimpse ourselves. Even though there's less and less to actually get back. But, a couple creeping chills. I mean, that's not nothing. Unless I'm crazy, that's actually lethal. But they could have some sort of interaction here, you know. If they have any form of interaction to get rid of one of my creatures, they live for a turn. But there you go. Got there eventually. And honestly, can't ask for much more. Um, get some Tainted Remedies first. Their deck is... A part of me wants to bring in some uh, Enchantment Removal from Banishing Light. But since they're being goofy and running a 160 card list, I think the odds of them finding whatever enchantment based removal they might have is very slim. Ah... Uh... What do we cut? Maybe... One ripple, a glimpse, and maybe... A supplier. This is one of those lists where, like... It... it <laughs> You have to bring in sideboard cards just to be somewhat responsible. But man, since the deck is, like, really lean, sometimes you just, like, there's nothing you're happy to cut, really. Still have to do it. But sometimes it stinks. Anywho, another gaze on turn one. Yeah, take your card, that's fine. Don't need any of you... Could have maybe kept a land. Uh, that's an argument to be made for that. But anywho, in the meantime, there we go. Do a watery grave, playing the psychic frog. We'll wait till their end step, to where if they want to attack, they might get a little ballsy, and we can always end response. I what? I mean, cool. I've always wanted cards like those to work more than they do. And they never they never work out as well as you hope. Anywho, in step, since they didn't attack, we're just going to get rid of the amalgams that are in their hand. Make our boy big and scary. Going to save, because I don't think we have... Yeah, going to save our land drop until after our glimpse of the unthinkable, in case we find another blood ghast. Yes, yes. Take your pound of flesh. Uh, okay. There's no... Yeah, okay. 
No blood gas, but we did get some prized amalgams. In that case, I guess we'll play a pathway on black. Do I have three cards I want to get rid of? Yeah, I can find something. Give our bad boy flying here and go over the top. So, glimpse gone, land gone, other land gone. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. Because I do want both of those cards. See what we draw. Okay, Narcomoeba isn't great. Has to be said. But we might just do the same thing we did. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah, we'll, we'll take those. Can't really ask for a much better game than that. That is what the deck wants to do. Just early on, absolutely vomit out a massive board. And hopefully, with all the tempo you've gained by basically skipping all those turns and all that time to summon them traditionally, you translate that tempo into a, a fuckload of damage, and then your opponent just kind of dies. Anywho, on to what I believe is game number two, right? Yeah, sorry, today's been a hard day of recording. Yeah, on to game number two. And game number two, with our little dredgeless dredge list. And again, we go ahead and play first because we have a brain in our skull. This is a bad one. Mulliganing. That's better. Yeah, that's fine. So in that case, we're going to keep this. Throw the Creeping Chill back. Going to play a Watery Grave on one. For a supplier. Next turn, we can play a Psychic Frog. And pitch the... Hey, there we go. Basically got it for free. We're going to play a frog on turn two so we can get rid of the amalgam for free. And our opponent is, I guess, playing mono red? No other, no other list really plays uh, the Kumano thing. Anywho, play a land, getting our blood gas back. Which also gives us our first amalgam. We will go ahead and discard the other Amalgam now, so that when the first Amalgam comes into play, the other one will come into play on their turn. Uh, which is my fucking god. How much, uh, let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. One, one two. What's that, like an eight, eight on turn two is pretty nice. Why? Why? I mean, okay. Sure, I guess. I don't know why. I, okay. Whatever. Uh, honestly, I think I'm just going to attack with everything. There's nothing he can threaten to kill. The only thing he can kill is either the recursive threats that will come back on their own anyway, or a Stitcher Supplier, which I want to die so I can get stuff in my graveyard. All of which, again, serves to sort of ultimately the same end. God, I want to play the frog, but we're doing really good, and I have a sink into stupor that I can actually use as interaction here. Or if I just want to bounce a blocker, that's always an option. Mechanized Warfare. Redder Artifact. Deal damage to an opponent. That much plot. Cool. Okay, this is a mono red list. It certainly qualifies. In that case, we're going to get rid of the Gold Hound. We don't want to give him additional activations of the Saga part. Yeah, fantastic. And this is a great example of why we run the Bolt Lands. You're not always going to have access to either of them as interaction spells, but even if you only keep, you know, one or two of these over the course of a game, it can be really pivotal in moments like that. Part of me wants to run Ritual of Suts, but I because I am up a game and I have a game for the Wiggle Room, I think I'm just going to run it again. I don't know if our opponent's deck is like going to be able to go wider than we're going to be able to go. Since they're running their mono red list in a weird way. Uh, uh, that's 
That's okay. This is another one of those opening hands that's a little, like, more iffy. Okay, Scorch Splitter, Splitter makes a bit more sense. So they're like a, like a mono-red cavalcade thing. They just also run Mechanized Warfare. That's fine. Uh, play a land and Stitcher Supplier on turn one. We'll probably play Ripples of Undeath on turn two. Genuinely actually enjoy the Narcomoeba. Most decks in Cavalcade decks are... Or sorry, most creatures in Cavalcade decks are really small, and a Narcomoeba or even a Stitcher Supplier can usually trade. Anyways, pardon. Another verb. And if they're going to spend a removal spell on one ones, thousand percent. Do that all day long. Since most of our cards are pretty sticky, or again, we want to die, the only things that sucks to die are the frogs, and in a mono red list, I'd be very surprised if they have... Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Okay, sure, I guess. <laughs> Another one of those don't fucking run this card. <laughs> don't do it. It's a fucking bad card. Don't do it. it. This It happened to work for them in this instance, but it will not work for you in any fucking situation. Don't fucking run this. I guess it's, it's the possibilities. It's a budget list. But they have those secret land, beautiful Japanese mountains, so they clearly had money or time on their hands. Whatever. Play a bolt land. Blood gas is great. We're actually going to play the Ripples of Undeath. Ripples of Undeath is actually, besides what we talked about in the deck tech being like another good form of, of milling yourself, this is going to be one of those moments where hopefully... Ugh, Ugh, God. Did we just die? Okay. Okay, there's nothing we want to get back. But Ripples of Undeath, this is actually probably going to go. I, I realize now, in Game 3, we're going to cut the Ripples for uh, Ritual of Soots, since we have to pay 3 life. Against slower matchups, we don't mind paying the, mat the life to, to, like pick apart the remains, basically, of what we mill. But in an aggressive deck, the three damage will actually kill us before we're able to, like, salvage a game out of a Ripples, the uh, Ravon Death card. Like, we're, we're... Yeah, does that make sense? Let me start my, my sentence over. This card's gonna get cut. This card is good for sort of cobbling back together a board state. From a, a questionable opening set of cards that we had. But, and this would be a good keep in slower matches where we could afford to pay the one mana and three life, but against an aggressive deck, we're not gonna have that opportunity. Yeah, honestly, we just can't afford to pay. We're just not gonna have that opportunity to do this. Oh, he can't block, so I might as well attack with Bloodgast, yeah. We could very well die here. I mean, we might get lucky and come back from this. Very possible. We're getting aboard now, though. We're slowly cobbling one back together. If they attack, we have to block the Swift Spear. Since that, because of the prowess on the Swift Spear, it just represents the most damage. Luckily, we have three cards we can get rid of if we need to. To, like, in theory, get bigger than whatever pump spell they're going to cast on it. To, uh, to ho well, hopefully bigger than whatever pump spell they're going to cast on it. In addition to the prowess. Oh, come on, opponent. You, you, were, you were fine. Don't leave. You had me on the ropes. You can still a thousand percent win this game. Yeah. Yeah, Rayburn, there you go. See, so that's a thousand percent the right thing to do. All day. Okay, so we... Go ahead and get rid of some of the stuff. Uh, this is another one of those moments of if they have some sort of... Mono, you know, some sort of 
red interaction, basically. It's gonna suck. But we might weirdly have sort of, like, turned a corner here. No, I want to have the land drop so bad. Okay, we're going to attack with... Ghoul, Ghast, and Frog. Gonna give the Frog flying, because I really want to draw cards. Because I want to find a land I don't have to pay three life for at this stage. While we're doing good, we're not doing so good that I can just throw away my life. Land. In that case, I guess we'll glimpse the unthinkable. And just accept that, like, this might suck. Hi, sweetheart. You're in front of the screen and you're not made of glass. Thank you. 100%. Get back a big scary board. Now we have even more blockers. Should it be necessary if they go a little wider. The Ruby Medallion's a little weird in a deck that's, like, composed a lot of, like, small creatures where you're not going to get rid of the colored mana symbols. It only counts for neutral cost. So I'm con confused as to why they did this one, but sure, I guess. Uh, that, again, like, it kind of sucks, but, like, it doesn't even suck that much. Because if you attack, I'm, I'm taking the trade. We live to you. Oh, that fucking sucks. Okay. I mean, good on your yeah, good on our opponent. And yeah, we're gonna cut the ripples of undeath. We can't afford to pay the three life to to pick apart the remains of what it happens to mill. Ripples out, soot in. Part of me would want to do Feed the Swarm, but they're an aggressive deck, so you can't... As a, as a mono-red aggressive deck, at that, it, it double sucks to, like, lose the life to get rid of an enchantment. Go ahead and play first. Okay, yeah, this is a, a perfectly fine opening. We will prefer running a supplier over a gaze just because it's like creatures on the board that you can that we can fight for board presence with we're doing okay so far I guess we'll do this on black playing a frog and much like we did in the other games at the end of our opponent's turn we'll just get rid of the amalgams in our hand Counter. Feeling pretty good. That's fine. He comes in a little bigger. And land. He's doing things. Has to be said. Plan remains largely the same. I do like seeing all of this. I, I don't think I've actually bothered to like state this. As a person who has also made cavalcade style lists, I love what our opponent's doing. I love when people try things, and that that's always going to be the case. Hmm. Do I mill ten cards, or do I mill six cards and get a creature on the board to block? I think we're going to mill ten. Okay, sucks to lose a Ritual of Soot in there, but... This is one of those, yeah, like sometimes you're just going to self-mill your sideboard cards. Yes, yes, prized amalgam. Doing pretty good, though. You can't double block and kill it, right? To what now? I weirdly don't want to give the frog flying right now. I want him to block. I want him to feel, like, scared enough that he feels like he has to block. Okay. Uh, that helps. That helps a lot. 
There, there are gas in here. That's nice. In that case, I think we're just going to... This sucks to bolt the land in, but... We're going to bolt it in to get some blood gas. Yes, yes. It's all referring, sadly, to the same amalgam. So we're not going to actually get nine or twelve creatures. It's all the same one. But the reason why we bolted it is that we could play the supplier. Yes, yes. This is one of those... Oh my god, this is brutal. There you go. Once you get past it... Amalgam is one of those weird cards where... It's actually more of a pain to play sometimes on Arena than it would be in paper. Because you can just sort of hand wave away the fact that you don't need to specify all the extra triggers are happening. Oh, I a thousand percent block. I don't even like these Narc Amoebas that much as creatures. Because they might have buff spells, I don't think I'm going to really be, really be able to get a trade on any given one of them. So I'd rather just save the life in the abstract. Oh, do they have one of those festivities, one damage to all my stuff cards that he shouldn't be running? Okay, that's better. Yes, yes. Ah! Uh, there's a ghoul. Can always get rid of you. Pretty much get you for free. Guess we'll play a gaze. Uh, another creeping chill is fantastic. I am actually going to give the frog flying now. Just get rid of some of our various lands that we're not going to be able to get extra uses out of. I almost certainly kill him, but again, math is for blockers, so I think we got him. Yeah. Alright! <laughs> there we go. And another really good showing for the list. I love this list. This is, list is fantastic. It's really, really good, really, really fast. It can suck when your opponent has graveyard hate, but like, fucking historic's in an eternal format. Like, yeah, if they draw their sideboard card, life's gonna suck. But even if they do, you can always just play the creatures as creatures. And more often than not, you'll have absolutely explosive boards like this, and you'll just destroy people, and it's awesome. Every once in a while, you need just like a magic deck go burr moment, and like, Dredgeless Dredge is a thousand percent one of those, like, just go wide, vomit your board, you know, gruel smash kind of thing in a non-gruel list, which is really fun. Anywho, thank you all so much for watching. Again, I'm really sorry about if this video sounds weird or, like, I sound extra rambly. I, I, <laughs> my brain has been turned to mush as of lately. And, uh, like, I didn't totally take, like, 30 minutes to record that finally got it down to a six-minute intro and didn't have to throw out loads of games. Today's been a, a rough day, but I hope yours is better. Remember to be nice to yourself and to each other. The world's got loads of assholes. It doesn't need one more. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. Like, sub, comment, all that jazz, blah, 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 blah. YouTube stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.